Thank you, Dr. Gu. I appreciate the opportunity to provide a, a webinar today to the Texas A&M uh, audience. Uh, as you all mentioned, uh, we're going to discuss the uh, Woody Ornamental Plant Trials at the LSU Ag Center. And we've been doing um, uh, plant trials at the uh, Hammond Research Station uh, for a number of years. Uh, the Hammond Research Station is one of the Louisiana Agricultural Experiment Stations that we have uh, scattered around the uh, state of Louisiana. And we are located in Hammond. And uh, we're right on the borderline between hardiness zone 8B and a 9A. So um, we used to do a lot of uh, fruit and vegetable research at the Hammond Research Station, but now we're doing landscape horticulture and uh, ornamental horticulture uh, work. Uh, we have a, a number of uh, research and a demonstration uh, gardens at the station. Uh, we are doing some urban forestry work. Uh, we have the uh, sun garden and the shade garden. That's where we do most of our annual bedding plant uh, perennial uh, rose ornamental grass trials. Uh, we also have an azalea garden. We have a new piney woods garden. And that's where many of the uh, woody ornamentals that we're going to discuss today are planted in uh, those particular areas. One plant that I wanted to uh, mention today uh, to the audience is uh, Dr. John Thornton's uh, Southgate rhododendrons. These uh, were developed over a 10 to 15 year period by Dr. Thornton. Uh, he is a uh, retired veterinarian. He lives in uh, Franklinton, Louisiana. And he's been breeding uh, native azaleas, rhododendrons, and mountain laurels over the last uh, few years. And this new uh, Southgate series is in the uh, Southern Living Plant Program. Uh, there's Southgate Brandy, uh, Southgate Divine, uh, Grace, Breezy, and Radiance. And these were developed from the most heat tolerant uh, species of a rhododendron. Uh, these are the rhododendrons that you typically see in the Appalachian Mountains uh, up in uh, Tennessee, uh, North Carolina, and uh, going up uh, that way. Uh, here's uh, Dr. Thornton. And here's some spring growth, some of the nice uh, new foliage on the uh, rhododendrons uh, last year. Uh, here's some of the flowers. Uh, these have been performing uh, very well at the LSU Ag Center. Uh, we've had these planted in landscape beds for the last 18 months, and they've been doing uh, very well for us. Most of the flowers have a darker uh, flower bud, and then the flowers open, and usually the uh, petals are a little bit lighter colored than what the, um, the uh, petals are. Uh, raised beds, uh, acid soil, pine straw mulch, uh, protection from the afternoon uh, sun is what you need to consider when you're planting these uh, particular uh, varieties. Um, we haven't had any uh, root rot issues with these uh, yet. So uh, you know if you can avoid uh, uh, excess rainfall and have a good, well-prepared landscape bed, potentially uh, these plants could do uh, good for you long term, four to five feet, five to six feet mature size, depending on uh, uh, what kind of a location they're planted in. I also wanted to mention the new uh, camellias that uh, Bobby Green has developed. Uh, Bobby owns uh, Green Nurseries in uh, Fairhope, Alabama, the October Magic Series. They're a uh, camellia, a uh, hemalis um, type of camellia. Uh, basically the same genus of species as our popular Shishi Gashera is. Uh, the October magics bloom for about three months, October uh, through January in South Louisiana. And there are some really nice uh, flower colors in these plants. Most of these are smaller growing, but a couple of the varieties get about six to seven feet up tall. But these are typically three to four, four to five foot uh, camellias. And, um, and then another plant that you may want to consider, uh, this is one of Bobby's, uh, that's the uh, October Magic uh, Inspiration uh, right there, which is a very nice uh, plant, a little bit of an upright growth habit. And this is Camellia azalea. Um, uh, Camellia azalea, it is a new uh, species of Camellia that has come to the, to the United States from Asia. And it's a summer blooming uh, Camellia. It has a lot of uh, very important uh, potential in the uh, in the United States in the development of new camellia varieties. Uh, so a lot of the uh, camellia breeders in the uh, United States now are using this particular uh, species of camellia to potentially develop summer flowering uh, camellias for the uh, 
for the future. Uh, we have the uh, Margie Jenkins Azalea Garden at the Experiment Station in Hammond. Uh, this was dedicated to uh, Margie Jenkins, who is a, uh, a uh, nursery grower in Aidenet, Louisiana. Uh, Miss Margie has been in the nursery business for 40 years, and she's credited with introducing a number of uh, Azalea uh, families to producers and landscapers in the South. Uh, primarily, that's some of the Robin Hill varieties. The uh, Robin Hill varieties include Watch It, Conversation Piece, uh, Wendy, uh, some of the other popular varieties. Uh, Miss Margie's uh, selection of um, Freddie from a sport of Watch It uh, has been introduced to the industry. And it's a nice uh, white flowering, repeat blooming uh, Robin Hill variety. Most of the Robin Hill varieties of azaleas will flower for you uh, two months in the spring and uh, three months in the uh, fall of the year. There's a picture of the uh, azalea garden at the, uh, at the Hammond Research Station. And then there's a number of other uh, new azaleas that are on the market. Uh, the Encore series has uh, four new varieties. Uh, there's a new addition to the Crimson series uh, azaleas. Uh, that's from Country Pines Nursery in Forest Hill, Louisiana. Uh, they're the Crimson Foliaged uh, Sports of Red Formosa. There is the uh, rebloom varieties that are in the garden debut program from Greenleaf Nursery. Uh, Proven Winners has the Bloomathon varieties now. Uh, the Freddie, which I mentioned earlier, is uh, Miss Margie Jenkins' new uh, Robin Hill variety. And then there's a number of other Robin Hill and the Wang varieties that have a lot of potential that just are not grown, that are not used in the South. But we are trying to work with some of these varieties and trying to introduce some of these varieties in the future to the nursery and the landscape trade. Uh, here are some of the uh, Encore azaleas at the Experiment Station in Hammond. Uh, here's one of the new uh, white flowered uh, Encores. And uh, here is the new uh, Autumn uh, Sunburst uh, Encore azalea. And there should be another one or two Encore azaleas coming out in a couple of uh, years. We've also been working with uh, Japanese maples. Um, everybody keeps asking about Japanese maples for the south, uh, more heat tolerance, more sun tolerance. So there is some potential with some varieties of Japanese maples for improved performance in the Gulf South. Uh, these are some that we have at the uh, station in Hammond that we think have promise. Uh, we have about 85 varieties of uh, Japanese maples at the uh, LSU Ag Center that we're evaluating. And we hope to have that number up to about 200 varieties uh, in the next uh, 12 to 18 months. Uh, Twombly's Red Sentinel seems to be a very good variety. This one keeps nice uh, red foliage into the fall. Minimum amount of a uh, leaf scorch, uh, sun scald on it. Uh, so a nice, uh, nice potential variety. Also Hefner's Red Select is another good red foliage one that should be out there and it's very comparable and even better than blood good so you may want to try some of these new uh, Japanese maples. We get our Japanese maples from Garden Design Nursery there in Georgia and also from Nichols Nursery. Uh, they're also called MrMaple.com in, uh, in uh, North Carolina. Uh, here's one of the Japanese maples at the uh, Stephen F. Austin State University Gardens in uh, Nacogdoches, Texas. And uh, there's a very nice collection of Japanese maples there that are about 15 years old, if anybody's interested in seeing a really nice collection of uh, Japanese maples. They can go to a Nacogdoches and tour uh, the uh, gardens there. We're also trying to um, uh, come up or, or look at some of the different varieties of Calicarpa. And uh, this is also called Beautyberry. There's American forms of Beautyberry. There's Mexican forms of Beautyberry. There's Chinese forms of Beautyberry. There's variegated foliage beauty berries. Um, this is your typical American um, beauty berry. Um, berry production is typically in the uh, September, October uh, time range. Uh, uh, native plant enthusiasts really like the beauty berries. Uh, they're very attractive for uh, attracting birds to your, your landscape. There's a pink flowering or a pink berried uh, beauty berry. There's also a white form of American beauty berry that's out there in the trade. Uh, here's the uh, Mexican uh, beauty berry. The Mexican beauty berry has darker purple and slightly larger uh, berries than the American form does. 
Uh, here is the uh, Chinese form of uh, beautyberry, and it is a uh, nice plant. Also, a little bit smaller growing, but can be kind of rangy, and the uh, foliage is a little bit smaller and finer textured than the American and the uh, Mexican forms. Uh, here's Duet. Duet is a variegated foliage uh, beautyberry, and it's one of the American varieties. Uh, but this particular plant does not set many berries. It's just basically grown for the uh, variegated foliage, and it's more of a dwarfer uh, grower also. It's not going to get quite as large as some of the other uh, varieties. And here's another variegated one, Summer Storm. I don't find that Summer Storm holds the variegation quite as good as the uh, Duet does, and Summer Storm has a larger foliage than the uh, Duet variety. At the uh, LSU Ag Center, we've also been evaluating uh, Easy Tea Hybrid Tea Roses. So this was um, four years of research uh, trying to grow hybrid tea roses under a low uh, fungicide application uh, situation. So uh, these varieties of roses were only getting uh, four applications of fungicide uh, to control the black spot disease over, a, uh, over the year. And the five winning varieties were the Traviana, the uh, Pink Traviana, the McCartney Rose, Frederick Minstrel, and Tahitian Sunset. Uh, most of these roses are in the uh, Connor Pile Star Roses and Plants uh, group, uh, but the uh, Tahitian Sunset is a, a Weeks Rose. Tahitian Sunset, a former All-America Rose Selection winner. Of these on the list, I really like the Traviana and the Pink Traviana. Uh, Traviata and Pink Traviata both have a very large petal count, 90 to 100 petals per flower, uh, the dark uh, glossy green uh, foliage. Uh, these particular plants at the station in Hammond have been in the ground four years and we've never put a uh, fungicide on them and they're performing uh, very well for considering our uh, growing conditions and our, our climate. And there's the uh, Pink Traviata in one of the beds in the uh, Sun Garden. I wanted to uh, talk some about the Louisiana Super Plant Program today. Uh, Louisiana Super Plants is uh, similar to the uh, Texas Superstar Program that is in Texas. And uh, primarily we do uh, annual bedding plants, uh, cool season and warm season. But we also have named some uh, trees and we've named some uh, shrubs as Louisiana Super Plants. Uh, this program was started again in the fall of uh, 2010. Uh, so we have 26 plants that have been named super plants through the spring of 2014. Uh, Shishi Gashera a Camellia, a Conversation Peace Azalea, a Frostproof Gardenia, uh, Two Roses, the Belinda's Dream, and also the Drift Series, a Penny Mac Hydrangea, and the uh, Rose of Sharon Althea uh, called uh, Aphrodite. So these are some of the uh, shrubs that have been named uh, Louisiana super plants. Most all of y'all are probably uh, very familiar with Shishi Gashera. Uh, a lot of people think that is a Camellia sasanqua. It's actually a Camellia hamalis, a uh, four-foot grower, a uh, large flowers, a uh, double bloom, and the quantity of the bloom is very uh, uh, impressive also. And they bloom for about 90 days from mid-October uh, through uh, mid-January uh, every year. And uh, that's very well established in the nursery trade in Louisiana and in Texas. As is Conversation Piece. Conversation Piece Azalea has been around for several years. It's a spring and a fall blooming a variety. It's in the Robin Hill group, as we mentioned earlier. Um, a little bit heavier bloom in the fall than in the spring. Everybody likes the uh, bicolored uh, flower uh, pattern that these particular uh, plants have and the uh, height on these is going to be about uh, three to four feet with a three to four foot uh, spread. And you want to do your um, repeat blooming uh, azalea pruning in the spring immediately after the uh, flowering is completed. Uh, Frostproof gardenia, uh, very heavy blooming uh, gardenia variety. Uh, frequently it's advertised as a dwarf gardenia, but it does get about uh, five feet tall in uh, south Louisiana. Uh, does have very good cold tolerance to it. It doesn't seem to get as much uh, phytophthora root rot as some of the other uh, gardenia varieties that are out in the uh, in the nursery trade. Uh, many of you know Belinda's Dream Rose. Belinda's Dream is a Texas Earth Tine Rose. 
a very low maintenance, a uh, landscape shrub rose that looks like a hybrid tea rose. Uh, no fungicide needs to be applied to the plant. If you don't need to prune it, you don't have to. Uh, very low uh, fertilization uh, needs to be uh, considered for this rose. And it's really a, a very nice uh, plant and worthy of increased uh, use. Uh, we've also named the uh, Drift Series roses as the Louisiana super plant. These are the uh, equivalent to uh, knockout roses but a smaller form, uh, two to three feet tall, three to four feet tall by two to three or three to four feet wide, depending on which uh, variety you have. Uh, the coral seems to be uh, very popular right now. It's the biggest growing and biggest flowering of the drift series. Uh, the pink and the red are very popular. The uh, sweet is a double flowering pink. The uh, apricot and the peach have some fragrance to them, so there's a lot of good advantages to all the different colors in the uh, drift series roses. And we just do light pruning on the drift roses in uh, February and in late August, early September, 10 to 15 percent uh, height reduction pruning on those as opposed to more drastic pruning that you normally have to do on your knockout roses and some of the other uh, rose varieties. Uh, there's the drift roses planted in the care and maintenance area at the LSU Ag Center Hammond Research Station. Uh, Penny Mac Hydrangea, uh, we, we certainly hear a lot about endless summer and uh, her sister hydrangeas, but Penny Mac is one of those that is a very, very good plant. It's a repeat bloomer, uh, does very well. It kind of gets lost in the shuffle of hydrangea varieties, but Penny Mac is a very nice uh, plant. It uh, grows four to five feet tall, three to four feet wide. Uh, typically will have blue flowers if you have it in a uh, acid or soil situation. We need to keep in mind that not necessarily every landscape has the right spot for a hydrangea, so sometimes you've got to find the right spot in a, in a landscape to get your hydrangeas to, uh, to do well for you. Morning sun, afternoon shade, a well-drained soil is what they uh, like, and those Penny Macs there in the Margie Jenkins garden at Hammond are doing uh, very well in that particular uh, landscape setting. We are uh, uh, promoting uh, the Aphrodite Althea as a Louisiana super plant. Uh, Althea is also called Rose of Sharon in the hibiscus family. Um, there's a sister uh, to Aphrodite uh, that's called Diana. Uh, Diana is a white bloomer. This Aphrodite is a pink with a dark uh, rosy eye to the uh, flowers. Uh, Aphrodite is one of the earliest blooming. Uh, Rose of Sharon is also one of the latest blooming. It has uh, more flowers than other varieties and it's, uh, it's just a very, very good performer. Kind of a multi-stem uh, shrub maturing at about eight feet tall is typically what you're going to see with uh, most of the um, Althea varieties, but certainly better than most of the uh, single lavender, single white, single uh, flower forms that are out there. We've also uh, selected some uh, Louisiana super plant trees. Uh, there's only a couple right here. Usually the plant promotion programs don't do a whole lot um, uh, bang on the trees, but we have uh, promoted willow oak trees. Uh, we've promoted evergreen sweet bay magnolia, the uh, southern sugar maple, and also the uh, vitax or chase tree, a variety called shoal creek. So a willow oak gets about uh, 60 to 80 feet tall, so it is a, a decent size uh, growing oak tree. Uh, primarily, most folks know willow oak for the uh, smaller, finer textured foliage. Uh, you have less leaf litter on willow oak trees, and sometimes you'll have a little bit of a fall a foliage color, but usually not a great deal. But it is uh, fairly uh, fast growing and does well. If you want to fertilize your oak trees in the landscape every year, the first 10 years, it certainly helps the trees to grow faster and really uh, develop some size to them at an earlier age. The evergreen uh, sweet bay magnolia, a nice uh, native tree. You can grow it as a single trunk. You can grow it as a multiple trunk. Uh, they flower about the same time as southern magnolias do. The flowers are smaller, but the flowers are very fragrant. The uh, foliage is more loose on the sweet bay magnolia, so they kind of uh, wave in the breeze. They have this nice silvery uh, backside. 
the seed pods are very attractive to the birds in the fall of the year. So the evergreen sweet bay magnolia typically also keeps a decent amount of the foliage through the winter in hardiness zone 8, hardiness zone 9. So, um, so you may want to consider uh, this particular uh, plant. Most folks probably don't know that there is a sugar maple that's native to the south. Uh, this particular uh, sugar maple is native to Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, the Florida panhandle. It's about 30 to 40 feet tall, uh, adapted to sand, adapted to silt, adapted to clay, so very site adaptable as far as soil is concerned. Uh, uh, a slow to moderate growth rate tree. Uh, here's a tree at a Rick Webb's nursery in Amit, Louisiana. A couple of years ago, that's about an eight or ten year old tree, a nice fall a foliage color in early November. And this is what you typically don't see along Interstate 10. You don't see this fall foliage color. And the southern sugar maple will give you a fall foliage color from a nice uh, native tree. And then the uh, Shoal Creek Vitex. Uh, Vitex is also called chaste tree, a good uh, substitute for crepe myrtles. Uh, this tree is deciduous, but it blooms very well from late May, early June uh, through Labor Day. Uh, it'll eventually get uh, 15 feet tall or so. It's very important to do some nice uh, structural pruning on your Vitex trees the first couple of years to, to make a nice multiple trunk of tree and also keep the uh, sucker growth under control. Once you do that, uh, it turns out to be a really nice tree and a, a, a tree that blooms in the summertime has a lot of summer interest to, uh, to bedding plant beds and to, to flower beds. I like to use the Vitex in that particular uh, situation. A Montrose Purple is another popular variety in Texas of this particular uh, Vitex. There's also a few uh, pink flowering forms and white flowering forms of Vitex that are on the market, but usually they don't bloom as well as the, uh, as the purplish flowering uh, varieties do. Uh, so um, we have a, a Louisiana super plant website at the LSU Ag Center, uh, lsuagcenter.com slash super plant, so you can see all the Louisiana super plant information. Uh, we have a, a Hammond uh, research station uh, website, lsuagcenter.com, Hammond. Uh, we do have a Facebook page. We post uh, things like ornamental plant of the week. We post uh, pictures of plants that are doing well in the trial garden. Uh, so there's a lot of real good, useful information on the LSU Ag Center Hammond Research Station Facebook page. So we certainly would like for you to uh, to uh, like that page if you're active on Facebook. And then the uh, LSU Ag Center sends out a uh, twice a month trial garden report, and we also send out a twice a month ornamental horticulture e-news. So if you're interested in seeing some of the uh, the ornamental horticulture news, landscape horticulture news from the LSU Ag Center. Uh, you can send me an email, and I'll be glad to uh, add you to the mailing list uh, for uh, for our uh, trial garden reports and our email updates. Uh, there's our phone number at the Hammond Research Station in Hammond. Uh, we would certainly invite any of you all listening today to uh, come to the Experiment Station in Hammond for one of our nursery, landscape, uh, retail garden center events. Uh, we have a, a lecture series and garden tour on Thursday, June the 5th, and then we have our landscape horticulture field day at the station, and that's going to be on Thursday, October the 9th. And there is uh, no registration fee for either of those events. Uh, just try to let us know if you're planning to come, and we would love to, uh, love to have you. So I appreciate uh, Dr. Gu um, inviting me to uh, provide a presentation today for the Aggie uh, Horticulture Webinar Series, and I look forward to visiting with everybody again in two weeks uh, when we uh, when we have another uh, web session, and we're going to talk about some annual bedding plant trials and some of the annual uh, super plants and some of the new plants for 2014 and 2015. So thank you, Dr. Gu. I appreciate it very much. Well, thank you, Dr. Owens. Uh, this is actually our second recording, uh, so uh, I really appreciate Dr. Owens spent his time working with me trying to get this uh, new recording, this uh, clearer session uh, recording to, to you. So uh, thank you, Dr. Owens. And, and, and like Dr. Owens said, that we have another one on 
another webinar on the LSU uh, plant trials. That's going to be on the um, Wednesday, April the 30th, and we would like you to join us again. And as you can hear that his voice is crystal clear here. So we figure out a way, and Dr. Owens actually figure out the way that we can do this. So um, thank you very much.